So from my experience and sort of, which again, my job job, like what I do do is creative director, creative consultant and all that stuff. So I go into businesses and I kind of assess how they do things um, from a marketing, branding, creative side and from an operational business side. So I've kind of morphed into this hybrid um, in my life. And as I said, it's all to do with people. Whether you work in hospitality or you work in the creative industries, it's people. Like a situ Managing people in situations. You have a client, it's people. It's just that in the agency structure, people don't really know how to harness the right stuff out of people. So management may be too bad and that means that anyone under that management is just kind of like struggling to kind of, you know, shoot up and, and skyrocket into something amazing. So what does not is like playing field is level and whoever wants to come in and just kind of be part of this and create and come together and it, whether it's like um, an event that we do or an experience or a project for a brand or for a person whatever we do creatively it's all about kind of giving an opportunity to the underdog or to the emerging or to somebody that's kind of up and coming um, I guess that's like the like the USP, it's like it's it's not it's not about you know money and retainers and overheads and salaries and all that. It's about let's look at the person, the human, and see what makes them them, like their background, their interests, their hobbies, their transferable skills, and let's just do something with them over you know like a CV or whatever. So the, the brief, the project is all around mental health. It's all about changing the narrative and how we speak about mental health and how we understand mental health. And it's not coming from a perspective of, I saw something and thought it would be cool to do. It's coming from a perspective that's very personal. Um, and it took me a lot of years to be able to talk about it in a certain way. And I think that um, a lot of times I think it's really hard for people to talk about this topic and ten people tend to talk about it when they do in a, in a very negative way because it is a heavy topic. It's not unicorns and rainbows. It's got to do with your mind and there are varying degrees as to how it can affect you. So um, I, um, from very young, I, um, I did struggle with mental health um, and it was it was you know I was a popular kid and I was outgoing and I did all the things but I felt super super lonely like a lot lonely I didn't want to talk to my parents because I couldn't because it was turbulent and then I couldn't talk to my friends because I didn't want them to look at me in a different way so as a teenager going through life you a, an additional level of loneliness is, you know, amongst all the other things growing up, is, um, yeah, it's hard to navigate. So, you know, my, what I'm trying to do here is change the narrative and say, okay, well, first of all, let's try to solve the problem of loneliness and say that if we use clothes and fashion as badges of honor or like statements and say like, we are feeling this way and that's cool, um, you might see it wearing it also and we might sh have a shared experience and it feels less lonely because you know that at least one person or people have you, they understand you, they can feel what you're feeling and maybe that causes, you know, that, that means that they can, you know, you can open up, you can talk to somebody because they're in the same boat as you, which that's the first and hardest part to kind of feel like there's somebody in your boat. Or, you, you know, so I used to always think I'm in, this, I'm in this ocean on a raft and I'm sitting on this raft and I'm just kind of bobbing away and there's no, no one around me. But how cool would it be if you've got like many little rafts around and you're waving at each other and you're just like, hey man, like we're not alone in this like endless ocean of, you know, emotion and turbulence and turmoil and whatever it is you're feeling. So. The brief is about that, it's about kind of, I think the first thing is, aside from changing the narrative, it's about trying to eradicate loneliness and say that they're, they're, you're not alone and there's other people around you that feel the same way and it's cool to talk about it. No one's going to look at you like you're some alien, like it's, it's fine, it's normal, it's natural and above all, it doesn't make you um, a useless person. In fact, and this is 
my personal belief, and I, this is not a blanket statement for the rest, you know, I'm not stating it for the world. I think that people that have a specific way of thinking and feeling are amazing at being creatives because they, you know, if you can feel the red of this carpet, imagine what you could do with that, right? Like somebody that doesn't feel everything. Like sometimes I say like, my, I, my skin feels things. Like when I'm sad, like my skin feels stuff. When you can feel to that degree, you know, imagine how you can use that in creativity. And I think that's what this brief is about. Like take whatever you're feeling, even if you don't feel anything, like just try to consider that and like harness it and to make, to create something. If we take the concept of badges of honor, right? We wear badges of honor, like when you're young, you get like a sticker, you did something good, you get a sticker. Um, well, I don't know, in my school they gave stickers. Um, and then you walk around with your sticker and then you get another one. So you're walking around, you're so proud. Like, obviously it's silly to say that you're proud to be, let's say, sad or anxious or depressed, right? You're not proud, but it may be, you could be proud about your mind. Like you could be proud about how you think and how you feel and all those things I just mentioned. Like maybe that's what you're proud of. And I guess what would be really super interesting is if somebody took this challenge and co considered the badge of honor and they and they thought, how could we take that and, and morph it into like, you know, products, right? And you tried to kind of veer off that cliched you know, st you know, you could write something and that could just be it. But if you go sort of like a step or two beyond and you think a little bit outside the box, my, in, in the brief, it's all about don't, there's no, nothing silly, nothing stupid. Just do, just go nuts, go nuts. Because if you do, if I give you rules and I keep you in the box, you're never gonna reach that kind of, you know, the, the point. And I think the, the changing, the combination of flip the narrative to something positive and look at the badge of honor aspect. Maybe if you marry those two concepts together, it could produce something super cool. So, um, I don't like the concept of a winner and a loser at all. I don't subscribe to that. Um, it really troubles me uh, because it's not even close to reality. Nobody's a loser. Um, so there will be a selection for what I think we would then try to produce. So whatever the winner or whoever is like the kind of concept that suits us the best is that we would then manufacture and produce that. So they would get to see it come to life, right? As under what does not, to be in what does not. They would also, you know, so the idea would, the idea is for the idea to come to life. But then, because I believe in, obviously, it wouldn't be what does not if I, this, you know, if we just let it die there. I think what we're gonna try to do is create something with all the other submissions as well. So, um, I have been thinking of a lot of things, and I don't wanna give a lot away because I don't wanna kinda say what that would be, but the idea is that whatever is handed over to us, is not gonna die there. Like we would somehow give it its spotlight and give it its 15 minutes. Um, and I think that's super important for me. And it's super important for what does not as a brand. Uh, because if we didn't do it that way, it wouldn't be on brand. And we always have to be on brand. <laughs> so yeah, there will be a selection. There will be sort of something that suits. So not 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 call it a winner, but like something that suits. But then also um, showcase other people's stuff too. Make yourself the target audience. So like in marketing, right? You have a product. You have um, I'm going to sell you this this chair. You have to think who's the target audience of this chair. So like who wants to buy it? Why? And it's all about solving pain points. Anything you do in marketing is about pain point solving. So imagine yourself as the consumer 
or the person that is going to use or buy the product. So kind of think, in, think about it on those terms. Like, who is my target audience? Is that me? What would I like? What would I wear? What would I have on me and be cool wearing it? Is it multicolored? Is it block colors? Is it like frills? Is it statements across the chest? Is it like little, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that you feel like, oh yeah. And then compare notes with your team and be like, would you wear this? Would you wear, what about this? No idea is stupid, ever, ever. And I think if you start bouncing ideas around, coming from a very personal place, the result can only be great. If it comes from, I've done research and I'm trying to copy or see what everyone else has done, or I'm trying to kind of fit the kind of, you know, like the, this is what I've seen before and this is gonna be, it's not gonna work. Cause the stress is all about that. Just kind of put that to the side and work with people on a human level. You're a human, I'm a human, they're a human. What would we, what would make us feel something? I know maybe a hoodie doesn't make you feel a lot, but maybe you can. Maybe you can see like a shoe or a pair of pants or a t-shirt that you go, wow, that's like emotive, critical thinking, interesting. Yeah, put that on me. Did I make sense? Yeah. Okay.